Hands at the short, he's hit, he fumbled the ball! The popularity of American football goes on and on. Today it even has its own TV series starring one of the greatest running backs of all time, O.J. Simpson. Time for one play. Wounded! Yeah, how's your leg feel? You want me to play? I'm in there. I don't want you to play the can't, can you? I, I can. You sure? Coach, you keep this up, it'll be Monday. It won't make a difference. No, Ernie. One play, I can beat Boyd! Damn it, Ernie, he plays on that injured foot. He could jeopardize his whole career. It's not worth it. But Boyd! The hell with Boyd! Ernie, you're the best coach in football. Act like it! OJ has a key in this highly successful TV series, First and Ten, shot in location here in Los Angeles. Tell her, don't ask me that. TV, please. For me. I like the business of filmmaking more than I like actually acting. I mean, in football, there's a winner and a loser. Any sporting event, there's a winner and a loser when it's over, and you know if you played well or if you didn't. And acting, you have to rely on other people to tell you if you played well. But I do like the process of creating something with a group of people, and you're all working towards a common goal. And when it's done, you can look at it, and people will actually get entertainment from it. Background. Excellent. O.J. joined the Buffalo Bills in 1969, becoming the most successful running back in the history of American football. A for running back, you know, to prepare himself for a game, and I think he's probably the... I know he's the most respected guy on the field normally by the other players because he has to be physical, he has to be fast, he has to be agile, he has to be talented, and in most cases, I feel he's the most physical guy on the football field. He's running against 11 guys, he's getting hit by everybody, and the way you psych yourself up for a game, it starts a lot earlier. It starts as a kid. I mean, uh, you have to have a goal. Actually, in my early teens, uh, I, got, I got a little wild. Uh, because everyone that they're doing the time, which is unfortunately seems to be the case now, uh, in, in, a, in the lower class neighborhoods, you had to belong to a group or a gang. And I belonged to a couple of gangs, the Persian Warriors, the Superiors. And, and um, even though we were athletes, uh, on Friday nights you would have to go into another neighborhood to parties. And I guess there weren't guns and knives around as much then. But we got into quite a bit of mischief, and we had a few fights, and I got into a little trouble. I was a very, very aggressive kid. For me, it was, I think it was a need to be known, a need to, to say, I am somebody, you know, a need for people to take notice uh, of me. And it manifested itself in, 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 in sports that I tried to be the best. This is a God gift, isn't it? Yes. To improve upon perfection. Well, when I was a small kid, I uh, had what they call rickets. I guess it's some type of calcium deficiency, and I was a, a, quite a heavy kid. My mother used to feed us <laughs> quite a lot, and, uh, and my legs were bold, and they couldn't support my weight. So my mother, who she couldn't afford braces at the time, she uh, devised some contraption with a friend of hers who was sort of an engineer, I guess, but she would put these shoes backwards and he had a bar going between them and he sort of uh, attached them to the shoes and I would have to wear these shoes uh, on the wrong foot with this bar so my legs wouldn't get too wide. And I, I did that for my first couple of years and then I guess up until the time I was five, I would wear them like during the summer. Places, everybody, come on, let's go! It was in 68 that O.J. won the Heisman Trophy, turning professional the following year, but his first three seasons with the Bills were a nightmare. I was drafted by a team that had recently hired a coach, John Rouch, from the Raiders, whose system wasn't conducive to, my, uh, to what I did, did best. He wanted to throw the ball. They drafted me because I was uh, reputed to be the best runner to come along in years, you know, since Jim Brown. So here I am playing on a team that uh, that, that didn't have a system that suited my ability. With the arrival of new coach Lou Saban, OJ's fortunes rapidly changed. At last, he was given the freedom to use his speed and grace with devastating effect. I used to run plays away in my, uh, uh, in my mind all the time, visualization, someone said. I would run the play over and over and over against certain defenses, and I would know that that outside linebacker should be in a place. I don't have to look to see him there. I know his responsibility, and I know by this time where he should be. So if I run a play sometimes, the guy said, how did you fake that guy? How did you juke that guy? You never even looked to see him. You juked him, and you never saw him. Well, I knew he should have been there. 
You know, and consequently, when you're running the ball, it's just like anything, like hitting a golf ball. Don't think. You gotta reach a point where you condition yourself just to react and not to think. With his speed and daring, O.J. began to rewrite the record book. But Jim Brown's long-standing record of 1,863 yards gained in one season still stood. The question was, for how long? Nineteen seventy-three, and O.J. is poised to break Jim Brown's record. By mid-season, he has gained one thousand yards, and with each game, edges closer and closer to the ultimate record: two thousand yards gained in one season. We were pretty cocky coming into the season. Uh, he had always mentioned two thousand yards, but I said, "Boy, we can get that Jim Brown record," you know. So as the season was going, you play to win. Understand, records will fall if you play to win, but we were a running team, and we knew the more productive we were as a running team, the better chances of us winning. Shea Stadium, New York, the date December 16, 1973. The Bills are in a pitched battle with the Jets in what proved an historic match. But I still felt the 2,000 yards under the conditions, because it was a little far-fetched. And we broke Jim Brown's record, I think, early in the game. I recall falling down on a run that I should have scored and broke it on that run. And then the guy started saying, let's get 2,000 yards, and we're winning the game. And I kept saying, don't tell me. And the quarterback kept coming out, we only need X amount of yards. I said, don't tell me, I don't want to think about it. The juice had done it. This record season total of 2,003 yards gained stood for 10 years, making him one of the greatest running backs of all time. life of an actor. Believe me, playing ball was a lot easier, a lot better. There was a winner or a loser right when the game was over. You know, all the work that you put in, and the clarity, I think, of the challenge, you know, the clarity of the game, that when it's over, you did a good job and you didn't do a good job. Now, you know what, all this work I'm doing today in this heat and this wind, I gotta wait till some schmuck, you know, review the show and tell me if I was good or not. Tough life. What are you here for? Trying out for cheerleader? I'm here for outside counsel. DD's thinking of having my firm represent the Bulls. I consider myself first and foremost a businessman. I have a number of businesses, a number of companies that I run that fortunately we've been very successful. And I like business. And, uh, you know, because of doing a few shows, becoming friends with Irwin Allen and the late Quinn Martin, uh, Lee Strasberg, I got involved in the film business just from my relationship with them. And I enjoyed it. Ellen, when I'm away at training camp, if that milkman hangs around here early in the morning, I want you to throw him the hell out of here. I don't know, Thaddeus. He's awfully good looking. <laughs> Honey, I don't think I can take another season. Oh, baby, you just had a preseason jitters. Your body is beat up. You cry out in your sleep from the pain, and sometimes you walk... Whenever I play a character, I try to add those niches into it. You know, uh, my character in uh, Person 10, uh, T.B. Parker. He has a lot of problems. You know, last year he had an affair with his secretary. That made my wife felt that that was a little more than a niche in the character that I was playing. But uh, I like to show that he's vulnerable, that things can happen. This guy's a good guy in the show. He's a good guy in the show. His image is almost the same as mine. It was towards the end of his professional football career that O.J.'s first marriage ended in divorce. Moreover, he had previously suffered the tragic loss of one of his children, who accidentally drowned. Well, I mean, I don't know if you ever cope with it. You, I have a religious background, and I think the Lord does things for reasons. That was, I'm sure, you know, I, I, I don't know it, but I'm sure there's a reason. You know, I just believe that, hey, my life is in God's hands, and uh, the things that happen uh, are for a purpose. And that purpose, I can't tell you, 
but I've been able to deal with it because I know that it was for some purpose. <laughs> Park, okay, we'll we'll do the last park. few steps into this. Okay, Warren. How do you want us to do you want us to square off or something? Uh, uh, am I an easy person to live with? Uh, no. I know I know I'm tough. I know I'm tough to live with. I know that uh, it's taken me years to uh, to appreciate what my first wife went through. Uh, I think Nicole, my second wife, happens to be a little more uh, tolerant of many things and in many ways uh, able to deal with the, uh, the distractions of, of, of my uh, existence and I've seen it get to her you know and uh, uh, I am not an easy guy to live with I'm moody at times I'm told uh, uh, but rarely <laughs> I'm rarely moody and uh, I, I got a little mischief in me you know, and uh, as they say, opportunity, you know, all my buddies, I got friends and we're always around and I'm gone. And, and yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no day at the beach, I realize that. Whatever his mood, OJ is surely a star at everything he does.